Hey, welcome to this Geography Masterclass. Today we are going to look at uh, how to tackle your Year 8 Geography assignment on landforms and landscapes. Um, I've come up with a checklist that I think is a good way of doing that. We're going to work our way through that just now. Okay, let's go from point one. Read the task sheet. You can find that on your iTunes U course under assessment. Okay, here it is just here. Uh, we've looked at different landforms and landscapes, but you need to create a four-page National Geographic magazine article on one of the following, okay, on this list here. You can choose a different one, but run it by me before you get started. You need to create at least six inquiry questions. Um, you need to write your article in four to 500 words. That seems like a lot, but um, it's actually not once you start to research. Um, you need to talk about these following points here, okay. Make sure you read those ones, you're familiar with those ones. You need annotated paragraphs, label diagrams, cross-section of your landform, uh, a map detailing its location, and a bibliography. Okay, so we need to choose one of these landscapes, yeah? Um, like I said, if there's one you're interested in, come and see me, and I'm sure I'll be happy to let you do that one. Okay, examine the sections that need to be covered. That's these points here. Okay, what I don't want you to do is just create subsections or subheadings in your article that state these points here. I don't want that. This is like what you have to talk about within your article. You need to create six inquiry questions which are developed from these points. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do that now. That takes us to point four. So one inquiry question is, uh, is one that is open and has to be researched, thought about, and complex in the possible answers it has. Uh, the section on geomorphic processes which enable it to be formed, that's one of the points you have to talk about on your uh, task sheet. I can develop that into an inquiry question by putting something like what or how in front of it. Um, this is my example here. What geomorphic processes have contributed to the formation of the whatever landscape you choose, something like Uluru maybe. Um, the reason why that's an inquiry question is because it's complex. You have to think about it to answer it and you have to research it to be able to answer it. It's not one that you can give an answer off the top of your head or give a one word answer for. Okay, um, we're going to talk about how to break down those uh, inquiry questions so you know how to research them. Um, I've done a, a really um, simple example of that just here, but I'll go into a detailed one later. What geomorphic uh, you would research what geomorphic processes um, and how that has formed that um, that landform or landscape. Okay, let's move on to the next section. Um, consider what you need to research and what you uh, and where you're going to research. Okay. So looking at your inquiry questions that you've come up with, break them into chunks that enable you to answer it. That will help guide your research. So uh, on the section on the impacts of tourism, I'd create this inquiry question using a how now. So how has tourism impacted, uh, insert name of your landscape there? Um, within that inquiry question, you will need to explore the economic, social, and cultural impacts. Um, to do that, you would look at what the impacts are. Are they positive or are they negative? And perhaps maybe why? And that will help you guide what you need to research uh, and also what you need to talk about. When you're doing that research, make sure you just um, keep a keep a, um, a link or, or a URL of that uh, website and paste it into a pages document. Write a little description of that source and a title so uh, you can refer back to that when you're creating your bibliography. That is a really important uh, step that you need to do. Okay. So make sure you record your sources, like I just said. Um, you can now begin by researching and making notes. Uh, do that by using a range of different resources, both online and maybe even text as well, um, or hard copy. So begin your research. Make sure you're using websites that are uh, good quality, authentic websites, uh, not something necessarily like Wikipedia, um, choose good websites, maybe like the National Geographic website, uh, museums and things like that, okay? Um, look at a National Geographic magazine uh, to see the style of language and the way it's set out. Um, I've got an example of that just here, okay? This isn't specifically about a particular landform or landscape. Let's just look at the way that it's laid out here. 
Um, remembering that we've only got four pages to write your article. Um, I love how this one here has incorporated a large image um, and a title, but also a little bit of description about uh, what they're going to talk about here, okay? Um, I've got copies of National Geographic magazines in my class if you want to look at them. Um, I'm going to flip through to have a look at the text and how that's laid out, okay? So you've got an image, but that image directly links back to what is talked about in this text here, okay? You can also see that image there has a caption just at the top. That caption describes that image. You need to include those sort of captions with your text. Please don't just uh, put an image without having uh, a description of that one, okay? Um, you can see the similar sort of layout here. Hey, here's a great example of a cross section, but also a map and how they've incorporated those two there together. There's also some text on it as well. Remember, you only got four pages to do this, so make sure um, you're using your space and your text really well. Do I want you to necessarily write a huge chunk of text like that? No. Remember, you've got to have little subheadings um, for your inquiry questions um, in there as well. So it doesn't necessarily have to be big blocks like that. Um, okay. So look at it. Look at a National Geographic magazine to get your head around what um, it's got to look like. Um, look back at your notes now and try and refine them and begin writing your text. So uh, if you've done really good research, you're going to have a huge amount of information and at this point be thinking about how am I going to refine that or uh, decrease that or condense it into an article. This is probably the hardest bit. Um, remember, you've only got four to five hundred words so you can't spiel on about something for ages because um, that's going to go over your word limit okay you need to summarize those points uh, into a way that um, does justice to what you are talking about uh, or gets across the point that you're talking about but doesn't waffle on too much uh, make sure you are proofreading your text after you've written uh, written it because I don't want to see spelling or grammar mistakes Get someone else to do that as well. That's also a great way of doing it. Find images that support your text like I showed you in the, in the National Geographic magazine. Uh, make sure you write captions for it. Also, you need to record um, the URL of that image or where you got it from so you can reference it in your bibliography. And begin putting your article together, okay? Your article doesn't necessarily have to be a hard copy. It could be in digital format using Creative Book Builder. It could also um, be in a different um, app that you choose, okay? So it doesn't, it's not limited to one thing. Also, you can create a hard copy. So if you wanted to print out your sections, um, like your chunks of text and your images and make it on a poster, uh, a folding A3 poster or something like that, you can do that. That's perfectly fine, uh, as long as it's in, in a similar sort of format to what National Geographic magazine looks like. And make sure that you reference uh, all your sources in a bibliography. Um, I'll talk to you more about how to do that a little bit later on. At this point, just record your sources uh, in a pages document with a description and title and I'll show you how to make that into a proper bibli bibliography a bit later on. Okay, sorry for the really long video. Make sure you go back and watch it again if there's points that you uh, missed or you uh, think that you need to refresh yourself on. Okay, thanks for watching.